Hey everyone, it's Lindsay here and today I wanted to share with you guys how to make a little needle book. Um, you can use this for anything. Um, we made these, Emily and I made one of these kind of just on a whim last weekend and I wanted to show how I did it. So here's the inside. There is a piece of felt for your needles. Um, on hers, she wanted a large piece of felt to catch thread, so you could definitely do the, th the felt as big as you want. It has a pocket here, a pocket here for a pen. You could make, I made another one that had another little pocket for scissors. Um, you can stick your pattern in here, your cloth. Um, you can put a needle minder on here. And if you... English paper piece. You could use this as an English paper piecing um, needle book where you just throw it in your purse and you have something to do on the go. Um, so I'm going to show you how I made mine and we're going to use similar fabrics, Bonnie and Camille. And as you can see, I have the front part quilted. I added a little bit of rickrack for some extra cuteness. Um, that's option. Everything is optional. You can make it how you want it to best serve your needs. So I have been quilting fabric to do little projects like this. And so if you don't want quilted, then you would just need to interface your main piece as well. And I will get to that in just a second. So I'm going to put this up on the screen if you want to like screenshot it. You need... For this size, you need a 9 by 13 piece of fabric for um, your outside. So this is your outer fabric. You need a 9 by 13 of your lining fabric. And I've picked the rainbow red. And then you need a piece, which I didn't bring it over here. I'll have to go grab it. Oh, your pocket piece needs to be 13 by 8. And then your interfacing is you need a 9 by 13 rectangle for your lining piece, which is this piece. And then you need an 8 by 13 for your pocket. And then if you choose not to quilt your outer piece, then you need to do a piece of interfacing. So I have my piece of quilted fabric. What I do is I just put a piece of white sandwiched um, with some batting and this I use a long arm quilting machine but you could definitely quilt this on your domestic machine you would just need to um, do whatever design you want you could just do lines or if you don't want to quilt it just use some interfacing I might go with something the SF 101 is a lighter weight it's pretty lightweight so if you're not going to quilt this piece, I would probably use fusible fleece. Um, I don't have a number on hand, but you can buy it like anywhere, fabric, like Joann's, you can buy it there. And it's just called fusible fleece and it's like batting almost. It's a little bit denser and it, it fuses to your fabric. So to start... Um, we are going to press our fusible fleece onto our pieces. So let me just get this out of the way and get my ironing station ready. Okay, so first I'm going to do my lining. So whenever you're pressing... Um, your interfacing, you do the grainy textured side to the wrong side of fabric because that's like the stickiness. Sorry, there's a big shadow. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I am just pressing this. Um, so 
So I'm gonna hurry and press this piece and then I'm also gonna get my pocket piece and press the inner facing to my pocket piece. Okay, so I have both of my pieces. This is my pocket and this is my lining. Make sure it's going the right direction. So the first thing we're gonna do is make our pocket piece. So I'm gonna just set this aside. So our pocket is eight by 13 and all you're gonna do is fold it in half, give it a press, Now this fabric, if you're working with directional fabric, you'll want to just pay attention to um, the directions because when you fold it, you want to make sure it's going the correct way. So what we're going to do is now it has both sides and we need, we want to make this look nice. So what we want to do is make a nice stitch line. Um, Really, it's personal preference on how wide you do it. I like it about a half of an inch, but you can go closer, you can go further. I also like to, I'm gonna kinda go in here a little bit further. I like to um, do a larger stitch because it looks like um, when your stitches are a little bit longer, it looks better to me when doing these types of finishing work. So I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to do that. Um, it's just basically for looks, but just all along this long strip where your fold is, not where your raw edge is, where the fold is. Okay, I'm going to get nice and close. So I did my line and um, now we're going to take our lining piece. And I do want to mention, I didn't backstitch on either side because all of these are going to be caught within the binding, which will keep it secure. So I'm going to line this up at the bottom. And what I like to do is I like to find my middle because this is where it will be folded. And I just kind of finger press it like it doesn't need to be like pressed pressed with your iron. So that's my line. I'm going to grab a... marking pen and a ruler and this is where you can choose where you want your pockets I like to do one in the middle so this is my middle I'm using a fabric marking pen that erases um, it's error erasable and I'm gonna mark this that's where I'm gonna sew and then I want a pen pocket so for that I would say an inch and a quarter is a nice size so I did an inch and a quarter away from my original line I'm just gonna mark that and then on another book that I did I did another pocket that was slightly wider so I could put like my scissors like that and I'm just gonna guess I don't think it needs to be huge so let's see that's one two and a half inches from the other line that we just did Okay, so I have three lines, and I'm leaving this side one big pocket because that would be a great pocket for like your pattern or whatever you're working on. Um, now, I don't pin. <laughs> I'm not a pinner, but it is a good idea to kind of pin this into place 
grab my pins here. Just a couple so it doesn't move while we're stitching our lines. I'm actually, let's just put one down here. Honestly, I don't pin anything. I just take it to my machine. Oh, I just poked myself. Um, and hope for the best. <laughs> but if you're newer at sewing, I would definitely pin. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine. And to make pockets, you're going to go a couple stitches over. Let me zoom in here. So here's my stitch line. I'm going to stitch on that line. I'm going to do a couple stitches over and I'm going to back stitch just to lock that stitch in place. And I'm going to go all the way down and I actually also like to back stitch my pockets at the bottom too. So I'm going to sew on these three lines and I'm going to go over a couple of stitches, back stitch, and then um, we will sew around, let me zoom back out. We'll do what's called a stay stitch. And basically this is a stitch just to hold all the fabrics in place. And we will just go around our raw edges. We do not go up here because obviously we don't want to stitch this down. It's our pockets. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just sewed. And you're going to see my marked guidelines. It takes a little while for these to disappear. Um, and you can, if you don't want to wait, you could um, use a different marking pen that goes away with heat. Um, but I happen to like the air erasable. Okay, so if I get close, you can see I just went like a stitch over. Um, so now I have these little pockets. So here's one for my scissors, um, a pen, and then I could put something else in here. I'm not really sure. Um, So on the edges, I just went about a little less than a quarter inch around the bottom and the sides. And that's just to keep it in place. So now we want to add a little cuteness for our needles to go into. And you just use felt. For this one, since my, red, my back is red, I picked some white. And you can do this any size. On this one, I'm going to go a little bit bigger than the previous one because the person I'm making this for likes to use it as a thread catcher. And I have this blade on. It's an Ulfa. It's not the pinking blade. These are more wavy than the pinking blade, but it looks pinked on the felt to me. Or you can use pinking shears. Or you can use regular scissors and not have the pinked edge. It's honestly a personal preference. And the one I did on here for measurement size, let's see, I did about two inches by two and three eighths. So I'm going to do this one a little bit bigger. Let's see what three inches looks like. You can always cut it down if you want. So I'm just going to go over my edge so I can get this first edge pinked. Um, also this felt, it is a higher quality, it's thicker. There is some felt that's really thin. I don't like using that, it doesn't last very long. So there's that edge. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look. This is my fold. And you want to make sure you leave enough room for like your binding. So 
So I'm thinking I'm going to do this one. One, two, three, four, five inches by three inches. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. I think that's a good size. I'm, I'm far enough away from my edges that I could actually go up a little bit that um, it's not gonna interfere with my binding. So what I'm gonna do is you're gonna pin this on and you're gonna sew around it. And notice, you know, we're still using this lining piece. We're doing all of this sewing so it doesn't show up on this piece. So that's why we're doing it like this. Um, you could do like, what would be really cute is like red thread. Um, if you wanted to make it look extra cute, I'm just gonna use the white thread that I have on my machine and I'm gonna sew a little less than a quarter inch away from the edge. All right, so I've sewn all the way around and now, um, if you wanted another uh, thread catcher over here, you could do that. I'm leaving this side blank. Um, so now what we're going to do is attach our ribbons. And you can attach them. I like to attach mine on the inside, but you can attach them on the outside. But I'm going to show you how I do it on the inside. I have a yard of ribbon. I'm gonna just cut it in half. And you can make the ribbon as long as you prefer. I probably will end up trimming it down a little. So what I'm gonna do is you're gonna take it to your machine and you're gonna go just a little bit above your pocket and you're just gonna stitch it on a little less than a quarter of an inch because um, we don't want our stitches to show and our binding will cover it so you're gonna do it on both sides let me zoom back out so you'll have one on this side you can pin it if you'd like and then you'll have one on this side you'll stitch that side down and you'll stitch this side down all right, guys, sorry for the background music. <laughs> um, uh, they're watching a movie and I snuck up here to do this tutorial. So I have it sewn on both sides. Let me just get in here. I did backstitch just to make it nice and secure. So now we wanna make sure, we're just gonna clip this I like using these clips when I'm clipping these things. We do not want this getting in the way of when we sew all of our pieces together and add our binding because that would just really not be good. You can tuck them in the pocket, but then if you get it too far down, you might have an issue. Also, um, you can, so I'm using like a, a gross screen. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. And so it will fray the edges. So you can do a few things. I'll show you what I'm going to do when I get to that point. But um, some people like to kind of just get a lighter and, and burn the edges, like melt the edges so it doesn't fray. You could use fray check. I'm actually going to sew mine like double fold it and sew it. Okay, but I'm not gonna do that yet. So now we need to put all of our layers together. Like this is our inside and now we need our outside. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna lay my, my front print. This is, I should say, if you want to add some lace, some rickrack, I did rickrack on this one. This is the time you would do that. 
you would just lay it across, sew it, trim the edges so it's flush with your edges. Um, this one, I'm not going to add any rickrack. So I'm just going to place my front piece right side down, my lining piece right side up, and we're going to sew all along the edges. And for this, I would definitely clip or pin. I like using the clips in this case because pinning, I find when I pin when I'm using interfacing, it can sometimes leave holes that don't come out as easily. And the clips, whoops, work out a little bit better. And you can see I'm a little bit off on this edge, but we're gonna do, the seam allowance should take care of it, but if you're worried, I could just trim this a little bit. Um, it does get pretty thick towards the bottom, but we should, it's not too thick that we're not gonna, we shouldn't have any issues binding. And all this is doing is making it so our layers don't move while we sew this. So I'm gonna take this to my machine Probably should put one over here. And I'm going to sew all the way around to make sure all my layers are nice and sewn together. And then we will add our binding. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to go in a quarter of an inch and then if I need to, I can trim a little bit towards, but I just want to make sure I catch this. So, um, if yours are lining up perfectly, you can go a little bit less, like a scant quarter inch, but I want to make sure this catches, so I'm going to go a full quarter inch. All right, guys, so I just finished sewing that. Um, I did have some movement. I'm just going to trim, make sure not to trim your ribbon off. <laughs> I'm just going to line this up and trim a little bit of this off so that my binding will go on nicely. I'm going to pin this back because we still have to bind. And you're probably... Binding is probably my least favorite part, but once you get the hang of binding smaller things, it's really not difficult once you get your technique down. I've kind of found my groove when it comes to binding smaller projects. I'm trimming this side as well, just so my binding has a nice straight place to be sewn onto. I'm not too worried about the bottom edges, the bottom and the top edges. They look pretty good. I'm gonna pin this back. Over here. All right. If you have binded a quilt, this next part should be easy peasy for you if you're a little bit newer at it then it just like my first year of quilting i every time i had to bind something i had to reference a tutorial it just didn't come naturally to me <laughs> but you know eight nine years later it's kind of you just now I can do it by heart. It's, and I've learned what works for me. So I have two and a half inch strips, um, two of them. And I like to leave my selvages on because they will get trimmed off when I sew this together. I'm gonna go in a little bit further. Sorry, we have background noise. Zoe, my dog is over here rolling around, giving herself a nice scratch. <laughs> When you sew your binding, you never want to sew it right sides together, straight line. You never want to do that. It creates so much bulk, you will not be happy. What you do want to do, and if you're newer to this, then I, like my sister Emily, she's newer to quilting, and so I tell her to mark a line, which I will do to show you, but... Um, 
mark align pin it so you're gonna cross your fabrics so one strip I have laying horizontally I have my other strip laying vertically and I've overlapped so I don't get my selvage ends in so now what I'm going to do before I pin you're going to mark corner to corner This is where you're going to sew. Now, I have accidentally, not by, <laughs> if you're a stickler for matching patterns, you can see mine's gonna match up pretty darn well. Honestly, I don't really try to match it. It doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, you can see how it's matched. With stripes, it's pretty easy, I feel like, to match um, with other patterns you don't really see it as like it doesn't bother me so okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pin these together I don't pin when I do this but this is how I taught Emily, and I think it's a good way to do it. See, I'm crooked. See, I'd rather take it to my machine, line it up at my machine, and just sew it. So pretend I have another pin right here. You're going to sew on the line. Um, I don't backstitch on this. You can. It's just how my personal preference. So I'm going to do that, and then we will trim off our excess and press our binding. All right, I've done my sew line. I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to line up a quarter inch, sorry for the glare on my ruler. Um, I'm going to uh, do a quarter inch away from my seam line and trim it off. And now is the pressing part. And I got to move my mat, otherwise I'm going to ruin it. I like a nice big workspace when I'm pressing my binding. First, I'm gonna press my, my iron's probably not hot. I haven't used it for a minute. I like pressing, oh my gosh, you guys, can you look at how amazing that looks? <laughs> I'm kind of proud of myself. Okay, I like pressing my seams open. It's again with the bulk, it reduces bulk. Now you have to remember, we attached these um, and there could be some stretch. You don't wanna stretch or it will get wonky. So now we're gonna fold our binding. There are tools for this that you know make your life a little bit easier, but I've never used them. I just fold. With one hand, I guide my fabric. With the other, I'm pressing. And you're gonna do that the entire length so I just, if you have a really like long space, you can get it done a little bit faster. I could probably move this up a little. You just press and then I move the fabric so it's even. And really I'm just pressing. I'm not like going like this. I don't really need to do that. You'll get faster as you bind more things. So I'm gonna hurry and finish pressing this and then I'm probably gonna move my camera over to my sewing machine so I can properly show you how to attach the binding. Okay, so I hope this has good enough light for you guys to see. I have my binding here. And when you are binding something um, small, it's important you start with the longer, if there is a longer edge, start with the longer edge. So, since I am machine binding this, I am not gonna hand stitch it once I'm done attaching it. I'm gonna machine bind the entire thing. You always want, in my opinion, I want the front to look the nicest. So I'm gonna attach my binding first to the inside. So, 
what you're gonna do, grab your binding and um, got like a string here. Whoops, okay. You wanna leave a tail. You have to start with a tail. And what I like to do, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, see if I can show you this. I kinda like to um, see where my strips land. I do not want my seam of my binding landing on a corner. It's like the worst thing ever. And I'm just, it's awful. I think I'm gonna be safe if I start right there. If not, you'll see how awful it is. <laughs> so I have quite a big tail. I'm more than halfway over to this edge. I'm not gonna start sewing right here, but I want a nice long tail. I have a little leader in there. So what I'm gonna do, I don't know why I have a leader in there, is so I'm gonna take this over, so let's zoom in again. It's kind of hard because I have the camera right in front of my face, so I can't see what I'm doing as well. Okay, now you have your raw edge to raw edge. Your folded edge is on the inside, okay? I'm gonna go about an inch away from my bottom edge and that is where I'm gonna start. When you're binding something this small, you wanna leave yourself enough room so you can attach your two ends. So, whoops, I didn't mean to move the camera. So I'm gonna start about an inch I don't backstitch when I start in case I need to rip it out because I, you know, maybe a little bit more than an inch to be safe. So I have my quarter inch foot. I'm just going to do a quarter inch seam. I'm going to hold my tail here. So, and you're going to stitch. And when you get about a quarter inch away from the bottom of your project, put your needle down. I have, I use, um, a Bernina and it has a needle down function where when I stop sewing it always has the needle down. I could do a little bit more. Okay I'm a quarter inch away. I'm gonna try and zoom in even better here. Okay I'm gonna lift my foot up. My needle is still in the down position. Pivot my fabric so I'm at an angle. I think it's 45 degree angle, but don't question, quote me on that. And I'm going to sew off the edge. Lift up your foot again. I've got pretty big stitches going on, which I don't normally, I forgot to change it back, but that's okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make our mitered corner. To do that, you're going to grab your tail part. You're going to fold it up so you have a nice triangle. You see that? You're going to fold up, put your finger there, fold down. So now this is what it looks like. I have a fold right there. I don't even cut my threads. I just kind of bring them out a little bit. Bring it back. And so I'm going to actually make my stitches smaller. Okay. The trim up. Okay. Now, it's okay to go slow. To make sure you get a nice binding, a nice even seam allowance. Okay, I'm almost to the edge. I'm a quarter inch away. I'm gonna oh, push my foot up, pivot, put it down, and you can see my corner is like lining up with this line. It's an imaginary line. Well, <laughs> there's a line on here, and I just kind of pretend it's going all the way over, but you can, you just go straight to that corner. 
Okay, pull it out. I leave my threads on. Now again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our tail, fold up, fold up. So you have a nice perpendicular line to this fold down. Okay. Now put it back under. Now this bottom side is thicker, so your machine might, you might need to go a little bit slower so you're, you know, you don't break a needle or anything. Just take your time. I find when I'm in a hurry, my binding looks like crap. So it's just important if you're machine binding to take your time. Okay. And like I said, once you get the hang of this, it's like you could do it in your sleep. Okay, we're at our last corner. We do not want to sew too far down because we have to attach both pieces. Sorry, I probably can go out again. Okay, sorry for moving the camera. Up, down, and for this last corner, I just go far enough to like tack it down. Um, I don't like to go very far, and I do backstitch on this. Okay, so you can see, I'm going to zoom out so you can see the whole thing. I'm trying to just trim some of my threads. Okay, sorry. I have this tail, and I have this really long tail. Now, you can see my seam is right here, which is kind of unfortunate because I'm going to have two seams pretty close together. But really, there's, I guess I could have started further out. Um, okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to put this one aside and I'm going to carefully trim. I saw my selvage on here. I'm going to trim like an inch and a half of this tail. You want to keep this piece. You're gonna lay this flush and have it lined up. And then you're gonna grab this tail and you're going to overlap it. You see how I'm overlapped? Now, this little piece we saved, I'm gonna open it up and this is two and a half inches. You're gonna lay it and you're gonna start where it's overlapping. You're gonna lay it on top, just like that. And then what you're gonna do is grab your scissors. You're gonna trim the top tail. And this you don't need anymore. This I fold and I can use it as a leader or ender. Okay, so now you're like, okay, I now have these two pieces. Now we have to join them. And this is where it can get frustrating. If you don't leave enough space, it is really hard to join these. So I'm gonna zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. Now, you don't wanna twist these either. I've twisted my binding. <laughs> It's not fun. I just um, make sure I'm just paying attention. I'm going slow. You're going to open them up 
and you're going to put them right sides together. And to help with this, I'm gonna fold my project so I have a little bit more room to like maneuver this. And I do not go to the edge exactly. Now, you're gonna try and be as straight as possible. If you wanna try and line up the pattern, you can. So I feel like I have a pretty good um, handle on where I need this to be. We're making that T again where we're connecting these. You can take this over to your mat and mark a line, um, which I would recommend. So I have this, I'm going to take this over to my machine. I'm gonna lay it down and I'm gonna sew, let's go back in here. A diagonal line. So if you can see, this is my center line right here. So I line up this intersection with this line. That's why I don't really mark. Kind of moved it a little. Okay. And the back stitch. Okay. Now just slowly um, sew your diagonal line. No, I backstitched again. Trim it. Before I get all crazy and trim this off, I want to make sure I have it, it fits nicely. I don't have extra bulkiness, I don't have too little, and to me that looks pretty good. So you're gonna trim off the excess. I'm just eyeballing this quarter inch. Don't call the quilt police, please. <laughs> I'm gonna press it over here really quick. It's worth it to press it. It just, so you're not so bulky. I didn't line up my pattern as well as I did my first, my first one. Okay, so I pressed it, but now we have to finish Sewing, attaching it. Okay. I'm going to start kind of a little bit before where I left off. Make sure I'm nice and lined up. Make sure you don't sew on this, so you might have to flip it over here so you don't catch it. Back stitch. I'm gonna go to all my corners and trim off the excess thread. Thread everywhere. Okay, so now we have it attached. We're gonna fold it over. We're gonna fold this our piece over and we're gonna fold this over like that. And some people will um, clip this all the way around. I do not do that. I'm gonna zoom in some more. I like to have thicker, or excuse me, longer stitch lines, so I'm gonna increase my stitch length when I'm attaching my binding. And 
Like I could like really stretch it and go really far, but I'm just trying to match up that sew line and get pretty close to that. I still want to go over it. Okay. Having issues, you guys. Okay. Now I want to point out, I don't think I can get any closer. This edge right here is where I've lined up the edge of my binding, okay? I'm gonna keep my eye on this edge because if I keep my eye on this, chances are I'm gonna have a straighter, better looking line. So keep that in mind. I don't wanna be clear over here. I wanna be on this inside edge. Put my needle down. I did not backstitch, I'll backstitch at the very end. Okay. My stitches look really nice. It is kind of hard to do this on the camera because the camera is like right in front of my face. Okay. We're getting to the corner and I just, I press this down. So that's what that looks like. And then you fold it back up and I keep my finger on it, or I'll show you what I do when I get really close. If I can find one in my mess of a station here. Okay. You can use a stiletto for this, but I just use my seam ripper because I don't own a stiletto. <laughs> See how I'm pushing that down? No, just go slow. That's, I always backstitch right there just to make sure it's tacked down really well. Now I'm going to pivot and then I'm going to keep on going. I'm getting a little far away from that edge. Um, I do have to say, this part is easier when you're doing smaller objects, but when you are um, binding a quilt, it's so heavy and kind of, you know, you have so much fabric. I do not like doing my finishing. I don't like machine finishing my binding. It doesn't look as nice. Like all this fabric is really free. Okay, I'm getting, again, I'm getting to my next corner. I like to stop, make sure I get that nice mitered edge. I'm just gonna hold it. And the trick is just going nice and slow. I kind of went like way far over. I'm going to backstitch. So my needle's in a better position. <clears throat> okay. And like I said, you will figure out what works for you. I've been trying to figure out the best technique for machine binding for nine years. <laughs> so this year I feel like I finally have it down exactly how I like to do it. And it's taken me that long. If your machine has a needle down button, I strongly suggest using it. It saves so much time. Just try and tuck those threads in. Okay. 
I'm coming up on my last corner. Forgot to grab my stiletto or my sorry this is really this is the longest part of the whole process but I really wanted to make sure I uh, got all the details on the binding because okay I'm back to where I started and I'm going to back stitch. all my threads okay okay so you can see it's not perfect some of my stitching is not on the binding but that's okay nobody's gonna notice but you and I like my front to look really nice so um okay now the last part so you don't have these fray like I said, you can burn the edge. I gotta zoom back out. I'm like way too close. Okay. I'm gonna fold and fold again. And then you just stitch. You just stitch along the edge so it stays. I'm gonna try and do that. I'm going to grab my, do you guys use leaders and enders? I like to for some things, some things I don't. And then you just do it to the other side. I'll really trim these threads nicely when I can look at it and not through the camera. <laughs> it's harder than it looks. I probably folded that one wrong. Okay. Okay. All right, friends. I think we're about done. Hallelujah. I'm just gonna leave that until I can look at it nicely and okay so I'm gonna zoom out so you can see so now I have my book and my ties these ties are way too long so I will probably be trimming these down before I gift this but there it is if you have any questions comment below I will try and answer them um, the great thing about this pattern is you can make big it bigger or smaller I've made a few sizes I think this is the best size it's not too big you can throw this in your purse if you have a big enough purse so hope you enjoy the tutorial and I'll see you next time